Welcome to another episode of Wakili Quick One. Let the residential uh, absentee introduce the show for today. Um, hello and welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2024, our first show. Second. Um, yeah. Okay, our. Oh, together. Our first show. No, no, it's, it's still our show, but... No, this is the second episode you're shooting for the year. But you did the other one by yourself. Yeah. Because I was busy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have an exciting show today um, with a seasoned Upper Hill lawyer. And I will invite him to introduce himself. Oh, you're talking about me as a seasoned <laughs> Upper Hill lawyer. I, thought, I, I was wondering who, who else was joining this interview. I'm Michael Contos, uh, managing partner at Walker Contos Advocates. That's it. Um, what, what would you like to know? Uh, let's, um, what's, what's, what's been the highlight of your week? Because today is a Friday. Of the week? Yeah. Goodness me. In law, in the office? No, or, no, just, uh, just general. Actually, my, my daughter finishing her mock exams because it's been, it's been a constant, uh, a constant uh, uh, headache for us, yeah? Listening to her complain about her mock exams. Now, the highlight of the week, there are many highlights, actually. Let me, let me be fair, everything's good. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, we're here to take your questions. But thank you for having me on your show. Um, I feel privileged that I'm, I've got both of you, which I, I will lord over some of my colleagues who seem to have had only one of you. So oh. I, 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 I will let them know that clearly I was more important and uh, I, I, was, I was given more, more, more deference and more, more space. Than, uh, now you are available on a Friday. Yeah. Ah, and okay. so, so, um, so, so is both of I guess. Okay, well, there you go. Now, now they know. Huh? So now I'm, they know. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, thank you for that and thank you for your time. I'm happy to be here. Um, so now that you're the managing partner, let's start with a highlight or an overview of the farm. Um, what you do, how many you are, and what your role as a managing partner is, and when. Um, so let's start with, I think maybe let me give you the history of the firm first, yeah. and uh, we go from there, how I ended up as being managing partner, yeah, so perhaps how I ended up with my job to begin with, um, <coughs> and that will probably help you put a few things into place. Yeah. Um, uh, so the firm was started in 1988 uh, by actually my mother, uh, Alexandra Contos, and Peter Walker. They used to be at Archer and Wilcock. I don't know if you remember Archer and Wilcock. It's yes, not, I, know. Uh, I think Jackie runs it. Yeah. Uh, Jackie Jan Mohammed runs it today. So they left in '88 um, and and started uh, started this place. They were in Corner House in uh, in Kimathi Street. Um, so Mum used to run the, uh, the the show then as managing partner. Senior, well, she wasn't senior partner. Peter was senior partner, and then I joined them in '92. So that gives you an indication of my 21 year. I was 21 years old when I joined. So it uh, gives you an indication of my interview process mm -hmm. you know, in terms of people assume it's nepotism. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I, interview I interviewed for 21 years. <laughs> yeah. So I, I went through a, very rigorous, through a very rigorous interview process and I joined them in 92 um, with Peter Mwangi actually at the same time. Um, we're actually a month apart in, in terms of when we joined. Uh, I was September and he was October, October 92. Um, and we were in Williamson House. Uh, where KNS is today. 2003, we moved down to uh, to uh, uh, where we are now, Hekika House on on Bishops, and at that point, also by about you know f a few years after that, Mum decided she didn't want the managing partner role, and it was uh, almost who wants it, mm -hmm. and uh, no one said yes, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was given the the function. But look, the truth of it is, I'm a, a managing partner in name. But not indeed. I think let let me let me make that very very clear. Um, the the office functions with several partners doing their bit uh, outside the pure uh, the pure legal aspect. We're all we're all engaged and involved in the administration, the back office administration of the firm. So let's just say I'm managing partner in in title alone. Um, the the truth of it is, um, I have the work of my the, the assistance of my colleagues and not just partners. Uh, you know the assistance of. My, my non-partner colleagues as well. I mean, you met Henry earlier. I mean, he's all, he also does his bit to, to do some of the, the functions that... Uh, and and I, I can't even take the credit for delegating those jobs. They just sort of fall into place. So I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky to have this, uh, this team around me. Um, we're what? We are now 28, 29 lawyers. So by, by current terms, I would say a smaller practice, I mean, not the smallest, but, you know, well, if we play the numbers game, we're not in the 80 category or 80 lawyers, 70 lawyers, whatever it is. Um, but we have a very core 
loyal um, and knitted team. So, I mean, just to give you an example, Peter and I have been together since 92. Uh, Greg, uh, since uh, late 90s with Dippin. Paul, early noughties, yeah. And is now, God, 12, 13 years more, yeah. More seems. So it gives you a sense of, 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 uh, of how this firm was, came to be. And that, that, that small number has no turnaround of staff, very limited turn. So that helps you build the, the core strengths that, uh, that you need to run a firm and to operate a firm like this. Um, so yeah, about, you know, almost 30 lawyers and about 20 support staff, 25 support staff, um, which of course you invariably need to run a practice uh, in, in Kenya. So, so let, me, let me take you a bit, uh, just, just still keeping up with the firm's uh, history. Let me take you back to your history. Probably you can talk about your family history. By, I, I read somewhere that you guys came from uh, Ethiopia. That's correct. Maybe you can talk about that and how you guys came into Kenya. Um, I'll start that. Let me just sort of take it back to front. And I, I will express on behalf of my family my gratitude to Kenya for taking us in. This was 1979. Um, and for giving us the opportunities that, that we've had. My, 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 when I say us, I mean my nuclear family, which is my parents and myself. I have no siblings. Um, I'm born in Ethiopia, um, actually as it happens, sixth generation African born, uh, but of Greek origin. Um, uh, Greece was always a nation that could never feed her people, so you have a huge diaspora population of Greeks and many in Africa. So uh, mum was born in the Sudan, my grandparents were born in the Sudan, my great grandparents were born in Egypt and so on and so forth. Yeah? So we keep sort of migrating south. We were born, I was born in Addis. Um, if you know your, a, a little bit about Ethiopia, in 1974 everything was nationalized. Um, the communist government took over. My family, and this was a, a broader extended family, the, you know, my, my parents, siblings, etc., etc., my grandfather, my grandmother, um, they lost all their assets. Um, and it took my parents, this was 74, we came here in 79, it took my parents until 78 to get out. Um, they weren't able to leave. They weren't allowed to leave, and eventually they were. Um, we did a small detour through through Greece, back to Shags, mm -hmm. if we call it that. Um, you know, in the uh, look, I had no voice at the time. I was eight, nine years old, right? But I, I, I recount the story as best I remember it, and as, as I've I've had it told me. Um, a, a detour through Greece uh, with a view to, I suppose, staying, but my parents' inability to reassimilate into the European culture into the Greek culture was was impossible and um, there was a there was an urge and an itch to come back to to Africa um, not necessarily Kenya that wasn't the, the 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 impetus or the incentive to begin with but Africa in general because this was home for both of them um, at the time we're talking late 70s so 78 79 um, look at African countries with stability um, Kenya obviously popped up and paradoxically, South Africa at the time, although it was in the height of the apartheid struggle, Soweto, if you remember, happened in 76. Um, Mum had a history of activism, uh, which I say thankfully she didn't bring to Kenya with her. But yeah, she's, she's been up front and held the placards and demonstrated. And, and there was a clear sense from my father's side that if we'd gone to South Africa, Mum wouldn't have lasted long in the apartheid regime, at least as a free person. So uh, we ended up in Kenya. I had an uncle here at the time who took us in. Um, and that's how we started. So, you know, the jobs, the, the tarmacking started. Mum had uh, qualifications, obviously, as, as a lawyer um, in two jurisdictions at the time. Um, and she started her training all over again. Um, you know, went through KSL. I think got her qualification in 82, was taken at an Archer Wilcock. Um, and dad became a businessman, right? So uh, uh, that's how we ended up in Kenya. My kids are born here. I've got two daughters. I met my wife here. Uh, we were at school here. Um, so this is very much this is very much our home. I, I, uh, uh, I, I as I say, I'm, I'm forever grateful for, for, for the opportunities we've been given. Um, and uh, which is also why, you know, maybe if we get into something a little bit more sensitive and we'll leave it at that, you see the opportunities we have as a nation um, and, and, and where I believe we could be genuinely and 
not really achieving our potential for reasons that are entirely avoidable as far as uh, as far as I'm concerned it's a bit yeah it's painful to see you know it's painful for everyone to see it um, I'm sure I don't know whether you agree or not but yeah so this is it it's uh, that's a, a, a brief nutshell of 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 the history of the family in Kenya um, if I challenge anyone actually to tell me that we're not African because my wife actually being German by nationality was actually was born in Nigeria so I'm born in Ethiopia my wife's born in Nigeria and my, kids in born, my kids are born in Kenya right so, uh, <laughs> beat that yeah. beat that if you want yeah I, I dare you yeah so uh, yeah mm. all right um, so let's talk a little about uh, the migration how did that impact on your education uh, I think my parents had the foresight then to realize that the only stable education format is the English curriculum English system you're either going to follow the American one if you're if there's a chance that you're moving countries you're either following an American system or a, or an English system um, there was an opportunity when I was in Addis for example I could have gone to Greek school but then that really limited you um, so I guess the American system wasn't really available in, in Ethiopia at the time as I said we detoured through Greece um, for uh, before we came to Kenya for about a year I was put through public school in uh, the national schools in Greece but never having done I mean spoken Greek yes but never having done written Greek or anything like that so I didn't last long so I think they realized that look if we're gonna keep stability for this guy then uh, the English curriculum English system is, is, is what works so um, so we came here I was nine years old I went to some schools that primary schools that are since long gone one was in Hardy estate you can mention them the Hardy Manor School um, which was in Hardy estate um, and then briefly a place called Gravilla Grove which is just up the road here uh, before I joined Hillcrest and did my whole you know uh, first year to six A levels um, in Hillcrest again very lucky to have gone there at a time when school fees were sensible as well not <laughs> not, not what they are today when you need to sell a kidney to, uh, to, to get your kids through there. Um, and then uh, university in the UK. So it was all, um, you know, it was through, through, the English, through the English system. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't have its shortcomings. It does. <coughs> uh, but it's got me here. So. Um, and, and in fairness, it's the one system that also recognizes the importance of sport. So they knew the buttons to press. Yeah. And... Whereas if I'd done any of the other systems, I'm not sure I would have. And I would say even the Kenyan, the Kenyan education system, at least when I was, when it was still the, the, the CPE and those, I know you guys are a bit young for that, right? But sport was very important in the Kenyan curriculum there. So when you look at Alliance, Nairobi, Nairobi School Saints, uh, Strathmore, etc., they weren't, they weren't as focused on the, on, on the academics as they are today then it was really a full-on you know you do your academic but there was time to to play as well yeah it's and that's a key part of the whole system as well so <clears throat> i could be wrong if i'm wrong you can um, you correct me but from um, some readings that i've done I, I, of course when you're having a, a tete a tete i told you that one of uh, my, my favorite people is yanis varoufakis and uh, from some of his writings and um, from most of the conversations I think uh, I had with uh, Justice Richard Lee Muthoga having a show, he talked about discrimination in um, the practice of law around this part of the country. And uh, from now my readings, I realize that um, many times Greeks are viewed as in the system of hierarchy, they are not looked favorable by other Europeans. I could be wrong could be wrong so do you think that had um, considering the time your mom was practicing it was predominantly British practitioners uh, the guys at uh, the top tier law firms do you think that had an impact yeah. in setting up this law firm it's actually it's a it's a it's a deep question okay so let me answer it from my perspective okay but let's let's also recognize that I come from a position of relative privilege in that respect right in the sense that um, a lot of these issues were bulldozed away from, when I say privilege I'm not talking about uh, monetary privilege or, or, or necessarily opportunity 
but privilege in the sense that these prejudices, should they have ever manifested themselves, were bulldozed away for me and on my behalf. So I've, I've, I can't really say I've encountered them in my capacity or uh, as being an ethnic Greek, if I may call it that, right? There may be prejudices based on skin color, which is a different topic altogether, right? But not because of ethnicity. Now, Varoufakis's position, especially when, when Greece was negotiating the, the bailout packages, and uh, you know, Greece was in tremendous recession, um, you know, mortgage to the hilt. We're talking, what, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and it's a crisis, an economic crisis that Greece still has not come back from. It actually fundamentally has altered Greek society even today as we speak, and that's again another topic, right? But there was, there was def there's definitely a perception within Greece that they're looked down upon, okay? Um, I, will, I, I have never felt it, okay? But like I said, either I'm too thick-skinned or don't, I don't care. I mean, I haven't, I haven't come across. You just have to prove yourself. Coming to mum, though. Mum does express some... a view, let's put it that way. Not concern, not... Because for her, whatever prejudice came to her, and let's, let's possibly put it in context. You're talking late 70s, early 80s, a Muzungu woman in practice in Kenya. I mean, no offense to the Mendeleo Anawake story, but mom was a leader in that. I mean, she, she, she beat a path for a lot of people, right? Um, and I would say she encountered a lot more prejudice because of her gender than her ethnicity, ethnicity <coughs> right? Now, were there a sort of a couple of derogatory remarks that were made um, by reason of her ethnicity? I have heard of them. She recounts them. I never came across them. But if anything, they motivated her. They didn't hold her back. Um, and in many ways, I can say they were the foundation to this. What we have here, you know, if she didn't have that, that. Um, no option but to go this way yeah because perhaps she felt discriminated whether due to gender or due to due to um, uh, her ethnicity it landed us here and and the truth of it at the time when mom opened walker contest with peter and peter walker that is in 88 um yeah there was you know a lot of the work etc was being determined by englishmen Right, and so I guess it didn't ha harm to have a name like Walker in the, in the name of the firm, you know. So, again, was that by design, by accident, by whatever? But I don't think we can ever, in good conscience, suggest that ethnicity or, or in the case of mom, gender bias have held her back. They have fully motivated her. Now, do, do, would other people react in a different way? I can't tell you, yeah. Um, and I have, and so because I've grown up in that environment, I also refuse to accept any of these prejudices. And I've got two girls, um, as far as I'm concerned. I, they're genderless. They, they do whatever they want to do. They want to do boys' games. They want to do girls' games. They want to do whatever. It's, it's we're equal. There's no, there's no, 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 no difference at all. It's, it's, and it's, I've, I've, I've come up with that. Just so that I don't, I don't lose a point. You, when you're talking about you, how you grew up, you really rushed it. And um, you didn't tell us about your university journey, how you came here, you went to Kenya School of Law. Uh -huh. So probably you could, uh, <laughs> you could talk about the university you went to, how you came that. back to Kenya, yeah. getting to Kenya School of Law, whether you did pupillage. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. So yeah, okay, I took that for granted, I suppose, yeah? yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, so... I guess the first question is why law, right? Mm. Um, I think that's the, that's the first one because before you choose your your direction, you have to choose or your university, you have to choose your subject. Um, again, coming back to perhaps I blame I blame my ethnicity for that. Um, the only acceptable degrees <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in that time were medicine, and unfortunately, my sciences weren't that good. Law engineering 
African yeah. parents. <laughs> That's it. Accounting didn't feature, yeah? yeah? With Asian parents, accounting also features in ah, that, yeah? yeah? So it was those three engineers. So because my sciences weren't great, engineering and, and, uh, and um, uh, medicine were out of the question. Don't forget, I have a mother who's a lawyer, but as it happens, I also have an uncle who is a lawyer and was a practicing lawyer at the time. He's since retired. And their father was also a practicing lawyer in Addis. Okay? So there is that, there is that pressure. And, and out of my mom's siblings, so my cousins, everyone was pushed to do law, everyone was pushed, and no one did it. Sort of fell, fell to me to keep up the, the tradition. So it was, you know, you're that, look, you're talking late 80s, right? There's no, I mean, desire to, you can't say I'm, I'm passionate about this or I'm passionate about that. And you do a degree and you do a vocational degree. Yeah, um, you don't go and do English, or you don't go and do history because I mean, yeah, it's what for. So I ended up with law. That's all it was. So I applied to the to the universities um, in the UK because that's what everyone did, um, and I got into my choice, my top choice, which was Exeter at the time. Um, and funnily enough, because my parents were actually at the time active in in trying to helped me see the, the world outside Kenya. Uh, I was actually uh, enrolled to do European law, which was uh, two years in the UK, one year in France, uh, and then one year back in the UK, so a four-year degree. I, uh, we left, and again, culture shock, yeah? I mean, I had, I think I'd visited the university once, and that was it. I was, when we left in October, uni started in October, I was given some cash, go buy your your boombox, as we call them then, what do you call these uh, stereo systems, yeah? Buy your kettle, buy your this, and up, so I literally, it was, I landed at Exeter, went to, went to uh, halls of residence, and now you're talking late October, right? And you start realizing there's this thing called the cold, and the sun goes down at five, and these were all major, major adjustments for me, right? And then, so within literally a month, I switched from European law, to straight law because I thought there's no way I'm staying in this continent yeah it's I'm out um, so that's how I ended up with law I ended up so I did three years um, I can't say I enjoyed my first two years um, actually I was a bit worried at the time I must say I thought gosh is this it yeah you know first year was constitutional law uh, and English constitutional law is 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 quite tricky it's quite a minefield and frankly not particularly interesting, right? I mean, I wanted to get into the integrity of commercial contract, etc. So, you know, I had constitution, I had criminal law, I had no interest in it. English legal systems, I had no interest in it, really. It's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then, you know, from third year on, it started to get better. And then I stayed on for a master's in business, uh, back to back. Um, I have to admit, part of my, motiva my, my motivation for staying at the university was because of sport. I was engaged in, in a sport at the time, then we were going national. Um, so it was an, an, an opportunity to, um, to stay and that was it. So finish education, come back. And so it was, you know, I guess it was predetermined, right? You're doing this, you're coming back, you know, or do you want to come back? Put it this way. Let me, let me face that. I said, look, I am coming back and there were no objections. I guess, you know, I, I you know, my grades were reasonable, so I, I had the, the, the right credentials. Like, I, and I mentioned, I, I'd, I'd done the 21-year interview process. <laughs> I went into law school, which was just up the road here on uh, where the School of Dentistry is now, right? Um, which is perfect because we were in Williamson House. And in those days, unfortunately, um, the lectures were a bit uh, inconsistent. So we'd go for lecture, lecture wouldn't come would come back down again. Even these days. Yeah. <laughs> but the good thing was it was walking distance. So both Peter and I, so Peter, I don't know if you remember Collins Namatanja, Collins was here as well. We'd actually walk up, Chris Akiwumi, yeah. We'd walk up, yeah, go to the lecture, find no one's there, wait 15 minutes, come back, get back to work. So we were actually, uh, are different to, to today. You know, now you go full-time class almost, right? Um, because also campus is so far away. But, I think one of the blessings and, and the luck we had was that we were actually working in real time. So even though we weren't in formal pupillage, we were actually interned um, and, and working in the office um, while we were doing these, uh, these lectures and, and, and attending KSL. Um, kind of what, was it a six-month course? 
six months or 12 months, I think it was six months at the time, and peer pillage was actually only six months, which was actually, again, I still consider it very short. Our pupil program here is a minimum of a year um, for a reason. Um, and uh, that was it, you know. Um, I'm senior to Peter because, and I always laugh about it, months. yeah. No, even in a year in terms of admission, mm -hmm. because <laughs> these guys, if you remember when Nairobi Uni used to go out and protest, so they were locked out, right? So they delayed their exams, and that means they missed the entry, the entry deadline for KSL. So I keep, I keep winding you up about it. That if, he hadn't, if he hadn't been out throwing stones, yeah, yeah which of course he denies, <laughs> then, then we would have made it in the same admission year, yeah? But uh, I'm technically senior to him because of, uh, because of the, admission, uh, the admission things. But yeah, it's, it's a bit of a funny story, that one. Um, and yeah, so we started, I mean, in terms of practice, the firm was very heavy on the conveyancing side. Who admitted you? Do you remember the chief? The, the oh gosh, chief justice. Can I even remember? I am afraid I don't. Oh. That's terrible. We're talking '94. My admission was actually '94. Jeez, who was the chief justice? I should know this, shouldn't I? '94 as well. Yeah, but this is, you're talking someone doesn't know their P number by heart. Yeah, <laughs> I need to, I need to look it up. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can guess the type of marriage, <laughs> which is how going next. Yeah. So no, we started. We cut our teeth at the time in conveyancing. I would say um, you even talked to uh, ask uh, my lecturer, and, and by the way, he was pretty much one of the few who actually turned up to to teach. Um, was Ambrose Richard? Oh, Ambrose was teaching at KS Club Law. Ask him. In 1990. Yeah. This is 92, 93, yeah. Jeez. 93, yeah. Ador. He's that old, uh, he doesn't. He was teaching, yeah. he was teaching at KSL. And uh, he was my landlord and conve no, he told me conveyancing. Yeah. And the guy was like, why are you even in this class? Yeah, you don't need to be in this class because we were taught here. Yeah. And we were like, we had a top conveyancing practice. So we really cut our teeth. Yeah, don't ask me about Civil procedure. I will not. Don't ask me about evidence. I even failed evidence the first time, by the way. I will admit that I failed evidence at KSL. Huh? You did. The only exam I ever failed in my life was the first, the first take of, of evidence. Yeah? Evidence. So you're so, always number one in class? No, 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 no. Please. No, I was never number one. Yeah, let's, Your kids let's, will watch this show. No. No. You've been better than number one. No, no, no. They know I've never been number one, yeah? But, but uh, and we can edit that part out. If <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this is not actually tea. Yeah? It's, it's something else. Now the um, so uh, we yeah we, so we start we cut our teeth in convincing, and then you know you you aspire. Okay, I actually it took me a year or two to actually, fun enough, say I actually quite enjoy this thing. Right, it's. Um, I, I didn't, so I did, at that time actually, I say, we, were, we cut our teeth in conveyancing, but we were doing litigation as well, okay? So I did have access and, and I have a, f a couple of funny stories there on that one, on, on what put me off um, and why I, I currently have a 100% win record in litigation in the Court of Appeal, but I've only done two, I've only tried two matches. <laughs> <laughs> Before the same judge who will, will remain anonymous, yeah. who, who I'm convinced to this day, just simply felt sorry for me. <laughs> so, so uh, no, so you know, you aspire and you grow and you try and do different things and and people hear about you and about the firm and so from conveyancing you move to a bit more of a commercial M and A type thing. Um, still, the litigation department was operating on its own as a as a as almost I wouldn't say it's part of the firm but a separate department. Whereas for us, unlike many of our competitive firms. We don't have a commercial department. We don't have a, a convincing department. We don't have, we're either litigation or not litigation. Okay, mm -hmm. now within that, we have advocates who may choose to have, um, you know, a particular preference in one area like uh, trademarks, okay, like, uh, you know, intellectual property. So we know who those, but they're still part of our commercial department. And the reason for that is, I don't think you can actually do land law or convincing without understanding the the broader what I call the broader categories of commercial law, right? Mm -hmm. Not just company law, but you need to know your tax laws, right? You need to know all, and so those are all 
So when I say we're in the commercial, commercial conveyancing department, and so when we built, we built on the basis that you're going to learn everything. And, and so one might accuse you of being a jack of all trades and masters of none, but I'll a jack of all I'll, trades is always better yeah. than. But I'll, but, or masters of none, but I'll challenge anyone, right, on that. Yeah? If you pick the headline areas of property, commercial law, capital markets, etc., we know it. We're good. Yeah, it's it's. I say that with no fear or fervor. I, I I truly believe that. So, but we cut our teeth in conveyancing, um, and I guess that taught us analysis. That taught us um, proper, you know, depth, uh, n no leaf unturned. Just really focus on the on on the matter. Um, litigation was a different story for me. It was. I just didn't. I couldn't reconcile the insult, if I may call it that, of preparation and turning up and being told, come to, come, come, let's look at our diaries, let's look at our diaries and, uh, you know, we'll take a date next March. And you've spent a week preparing. Yeah? I couldn't, I couldn't, and how my guys, how my partners do this, honestly, you have to have a special so I guess this is where the Greek in me comes out, where I get a bit more emotional, a bit more temperamental, and, and, and I just thought, I, you know, I can't do this. I mean, I'll give you some other examples. So there was that, and then, so I'll give you an anecdote on that. So I was shadowing one of our partners at the time, Carol Kitoni. Um, she was hand, we were handling a receivership, um, and the matter was, so there was the usual injunction application, da, 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 filed in Nakuru. We prepared. Coloban injunctions, I knew it in those days. I knew it backwards, man. There was no Gela Kasman Brown. I'm, I will lick this thing, no problem, right? <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> we leave Nairobi at 6 in the morning, my car, get to Nakuru. I won't name the judge, I won't name the lawyer. L opposing lawyer gets up, says, My Lord, appeal, preliminary objection. Yes, thank you, granted. Yeah. <laughs> We're eh, back in the car at 9.03. <laughs> Yeah, so I thought, no, I'm sorry, this is one. Then the other one, which which was running down matters, we were doing a lot of insurance work at the time, um, and we were acting for the insurance companies. And I remember, you know, and you know, it's horse trading. Yeah, you're gonna settle a guy for whatever this because there's this contribution, that, etc. There was a manual we looked at, and there was one matter in which the the claimant. The, deceit, the, the, the family were claiming on behalf of, of the, a person who, who, who was killed in a road accident. Young guy, 35 years old, two kids, a real up-and-comer, yeah? And I settled him at the time for something like 250,000 shillings, the, the, the life, yeah? That was an accepted, and it was by mutual agreement with the lawyer, maybe a bit more, 400, I can't remember what it was, but either way it was not commensurate. Yeah. I went home that night, even now it brings me, actually it makes me emotional. I went home that night and I, 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 uh, I was seeing my wife, I mean we weren't married, but um, you know, my, my, my now wife, and I threw up. I'm like, I can't do this. This is not, it's not ethical. It's not, I'd done my job. And I came, I saw mom, I said, listen, if you're going to have me doing this, this stuff, Please let me just, I can't do it, yeah? So if this is what it takes to be here, I don't have it. I'm not prepared to do it. So just let me know and I'll go. It's fine. And, you know, she said, look, just relax. You know, we have other lawyers for, for these things. But it definitely taught me a few things. Um, and it taught me that I'm not cut out for some aspects of law. Um, you know, there, anything that involves, so to this day, for example, again, so those things. If, you, if you're involved, sometimes you have family disputes. Um, you know, uh, matrimonial, uh, matrimonial issues. When kids are brought into the equation, things like I don't want to do any of that stuff, man. It's, 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 it's not. Um, I've digressed. I think. Yeah, 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 no, 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 no. You're still in. <coughs> yeah. um, let's talk about um, hiring. Um, I've noticed a lot of your partners are. Is there a word like ingrown? Homegrown. 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 Yes. Ingrown, so ingrown, ingrown is usually is usually is usually is usually malignant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ingrown. Um, let's talk about um, just start from hiring. What is it you look for? 
And uh, is it a rule that all your partners have to be homegrown? And at what level do they come at uh, pupillage, internship? How, how is the process? I don't think we, I wouldn't say we have a formula for it. Um, we, maybe we've, we've stumbled onto one, but it, definitely not by, by design. Uh, I would say mostly by accident and by, by the grace of luck and, and whatever there is that looks out for us. Um, we always had a policy that obviously we try and keep who we can. Now, of course, it's difficult when you eventually you don't have space anymore, you don't have payroll capability anymore. But so a reason, I suppose, one reason why we, you know, a lot of our guys are, are, have been around for a while is because they've started at the pupil level, at the first year level, um, which means, you know, whatever we do for recruitment um, works for us, right? I'm not saying we've kept everyone. Uh, I'm not saying everyone has made the cut. But if you do make the cut, generally you, you will stay on. Um, because if you're good, you're good, right? And there's a reason to, to keep you. You're, you're bringing something to the firm. You're bringing a... And, and what we look for... I mean, you, of course, you've got to have knowledge of the law. You've got to have... I mean, there's all of that. But there's also these, these intangible components, right? The person. Um, I guess we're in your face a lot more. We know about you. You know, we, we want to know about you. So we, we try and immerse ourselves in that. Um, and yeah, if you have good people, you're going to have good lawyers. It's, it's, uh, you're going to have good staff. You're going to have good partners. And my partners have been with me for us. I mean, again, some of them, I've, I've had them as partners longer than I've been married. And I've been married for 25 years. Yeah? <laughs> so, uh, so, I mean, it says, it says something, right? Um, so I don't think we have a policy that's written down as such. What's the recruitment? There are years when we don't take anyone on. Because, for example, like I, I, so far this year, we haven't. And we haven't done any recruitment for 2024. Whatever that means about us, I don't know. But last year's batch was so good, right? No raises. Don't ask for a raise. <laughs> last year's batch was so good that we wanted all of them. We, we wanted to keep them and they wanted to stay on. Let me, let me put it that way, yeah? So I guess it cuts both ways. Maybe you should ask the question to, to, to why are you staying, yeah? It's, it's <laughs> as opposed to why are you being kept on. I mean, I'm, again, I'm lucky I'm, I'm grateful that they're staying. Because don't forget also, we spend a lot of time and resource in, in training people up, right? And, and, you know, we work in some niche areas that aren't necessarily uh, mainstream. Um, and we, again, by luck, uh, as opposed to design, right? You, 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 you build up a knowledge base and, 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 a, and, a, and an experience base in a particular area. Um, so the last thing you want is for someone to to take take that away. So you know we try and look after our stuff as well. It's um, so it's, it's it's mutual. I think you have to ask them uh, before it's probably as relevant. Uh, but it's also an expression on my side to say thank you to to, to all of them. It's, uh, so, we can't do it without them. So just just to stay around the around the farm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, movement with uh, especially big farms like yours moving towards international partnerships. And considering that you said you have family in Greece, you have family in Egypt, you have family in uh, Sudan, are you guys in any form of uh, such an arrangement? And if not, are you looking for towards that direction? Okay, um, we are in strategic alliance with Norton Rose. Um, uh, you'll see it from our website, etc. The only difference is we haven't co-branded or we haven't, we haven't done that branding. So we recognize, let, let's, let's also, I guess, spin it another way. To believe that the Kenyan legal market is exclusive to Kenyan counsel is, is fatal, if you start believing that, right? Because you've got these Uber firms, um, the Clifford Chances, the uh, Norton Roses, the uh, Allen and Overies, you've heard of all these big names, Herbert Smith, etc. Um, they need to grow their book, yeah? So you get a lot of international law firms coming and doing hit and run English law work because a lot of the finance work, as I'm sure you've seen now, there's a lot of English law component and you'll do some element on Kenyan law compliance, etc. But the, the heavy lifting is being done out of, out of London or out of Joburg or out of DC or what, what have you, right? Um, I'm not necessarily, that's Paul, by the way. Um, ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not necessarily a, a something that we can blame them for because sometimes they're also their clients demand their involvement in that. Who's, who's, who's Walker Contos? Who's 
so and so. I mean, it's taken us a while to build our, to build our names, right? So we recognize. And so what they were doing, these guys were coming and doing hit and run, seeing our clients, right? Um, in our backyard, quite literally taking up their office suite at Sankara or wherever it is. <laughs> the irony, there was one incident where I just, so I leave a name who was there, right? So one of these big firms, I won't name them, invited us to a presentation at Serena. It was a few years, many years ago, actually, probably near 10 now. And they put up on the slides all the deals they've done yeah. in Kenya, right? And in Africa. So we look at, you know, as the Americans call it, the country Africa, yeah? It's <laughs> 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 yeah? And I'm looking at Sonal is there from ALN, Oliver was there from KNS, I can't even, Paris was there, I think. I mean, we had all the peer group was there. Um, I think Githu might have been there, right? Um, quite a, I mean, you know, top, the, the, the co corporate commercial guys that you know of, right? More, more of us. And they were talking to us about the deals yeah. they've done on the continent yeah. and what that, so this was an offering, <laughs> yeah. this is an offering to us. Yes. And then you sit and you look down the list of the, of the, of the deals they put up and you're like, listen, I know you did that one, I did those two, yeah. you did those three. So what the hell are they doing? Yeah, they're pitching in our backyard. I just got up and left. Yeah, it's it's so. But you recognize that you can't compete against that machine. They've got resource. They've got back office function. They've got a BD, that business development. And frankly, that's the one aspect that I just thoroughly dislike. I appreciate it's part and parcel of of running a, pra a big firm. But I just rather do my work. Let my work speak for me. Let the, the old style, you know, referral. Work. But who am I? Who am I fooling? Let's not be naive. When we started, we were what five hundred lawyers a year or whatever we were. Now, just Kenya alone, how many are we churning out? A thousand? Twenty thousand. 20, 20, 20, a year. Oh, a year, a thousand. More, I would say. No, no, about three thousand. Yes. Yeah. And so, assume, extrapolate that globally. Yeah, bring in AI, bring in cheap legal services through India, through China, who are using all these AI tools, etc. And suddenly the competitive environment. So I say I dislike the BD side, right? Yeah. But you know you've got to do it. So we come back now to your question. Um, you recognize that it's happening, so you've got to you've got to jump on the train. So we jumped on the train with Norton Rose for two reasons. One, we we're already doing referral work with Norton Rose as it then was. Okay. They were, they were, there were three firms. Norton Rose Fulbright is actually made up of three firms. It's Norton Rose from the, what was then the UK and Asia. There was Fulbright's, which was the US component that they, the, those two merged. And there was an outfit called the Nace Rates in South Africa, which was absorbed into the whole thing. And we actually, by pure coincidence, and I always joke with them and I say we were the catalyst that brought them together, which is of course nonsense, <laughs> but still. But, so we, we were working with, with each arm at a particular time. So we had that relationship. Um, but more to the point, a lot of these relationships, even though you're dealing with corporates, are based on personalities and individuals. And the truth of it is, had it not been for two or three individuals at NRF, um, I wouldn't have, we wouldn't have done any type of arrangement. So we are in a strategic alliance. It's a best friends relationship type of thing. Uh, more than best friends, but in the same vein, we are we work very closely with some of the other uh, international firms. Um, again, non-exclusive. Um, you recognise they're there; they're here to stay. Now, whether you want to brand with one specific one or not, that's a strategic issue that you have to take, and you also have to, to ask what what comes to the table for you. So, we are autonomous. Okay, I don't know some of the other co-branded outfits here whether they are autonomous or whether it's just a franchise I know DLA uh, IKM is definitely more of a franchise type arrangement there's no overlap in books elsewhere perhaps there is an overlap in books or who who has management managerial control who do you report to bottom line if we want to switch the lights off or switch them on for that matter we ask no one right it's it's, it's just ourselves but it's a real threat um, because of the resource they have um, and we need to find our place 
within that. We can't avoid it. We can't keep them out. We can't. Um, and look, they, they bring some finesse to the whole thing. I, I won't lie. I have learned a lot from working with with um, with international outfits um, in terms of exactness, precision, turnaround. Um, you know, uh, and and also you know understanding how other legal legal you know being able to draw comparatives i mean one of the things i mentioned to you earlier was how i i um i cry when i see the opportunities we have as a nation right and, and now let's look at legal services and legal sector on its own right and you see and you're able to compare and you say wow so you, you know when i tell clients that you know we need a three-week turnaround time to stamp and register something for example they're like, why why? It's a, it's a purely what they call ministerial or administrative process. Why are you qualifying everything you do until you see the registered? Yeah, because you never know what's going to happen, right? It's whether a document is going to be rejected or rejected for some spurious reason or, or what have you, right? I mean, you know it. You're a practitioner. You know, yeah. File missing, by the way, that's the other one. That you like. <laughs> and, and so, you know, one of the jokes we have is, is, is and I try and sensitize my, my colleagues, is when you're writing to an overseas client or a law firm, for example, uh, we see them as clients sometimes, by the way, as well. Huh? And you say, you know, the the registrar is whatever he's, he's valuing or whatever. Now, if I tell you they're doing the valuation, you'll know exactly what I mean. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> they, they are doing the valuation full stop. Yeah. Now you send that same email to some guy in Washington, right? They are doing, you say, who, what, when, what is this? Yeah, you never told me about this, right? So everyone flaps. So, you know, it's again, trying to hold their hands and sensitize them that there is a process it will work relax calm down we've got this we think we hope <laughs> you never know right um, but yeah look your question was trends we are already affiliated uh, with this lovely outfit we have some good friends there we work well with them together um, and uh, you know we get to work with people across across the globe now the downside of that sometimes is you know I, I mean if you're on a particular transaction and you know how these things work if you're on u.s time zones you're on u.s time zones right so you do your bit here you go home and you know do you, you know you've got an hour or two and then maybe you're back on, on on call and on duty and thank goodness for remote working now otherwise you'd have to be i mean there was a time we used to do this here right and get home at 10 o'clock 11 o'clock at night um which is tiring that was tiring at least if you're able to do it from home now it's it works um but it's a it's a great experience um yeah we, i think if i'm to sort of critique it a little bit in terms of the the money split i get a sense that they get significantly more <laughs> than what the, the what the the local council do um i mean they get away with some crazy hourly billing uh, usually no questions asked and, and you're left scrambling right for, <laughs> for the the bits that that fell off the table but it's okay you know it's it is what it is yeah we would we'll be We've been lucky. We've been lucky. Uh, we've had some good, good relationships. Um, and again, I, w I won't name them, but there's, I have to say thank you to them as well for showing faith. We were never a brand firm before. Yeah, we were just Walker Contos. At some point they said, okay, we recognize, you know, you start small, small, yeah? yeah. They, okay, we like you. And it's a lot personality driven and, 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 and what have you. And hopefully you back that up with service. And by the way, that's one key ethos that we try and instill with all our with everyone whether you're lawyer non-lawyer we are a service industry we are no different and people laugh at me you are we are no different to the hospitality sector yeah we should we should be free of any airs and graces we owe our job we owe our livelihood to the client we have to be grateful to the client we have to be even more grateful to the client who pays <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is another challenge yes get paid and say thank you by the way yeah you have to say thank you no it's it's an ethos we are we are in the service industry and 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 um if you don't if you don't want to be in the service industry then law is not is not for you i mean i'm not that senior lawyer where people will come to me because i'm the only guy who can do the job and we have lawyers who are like that in kenya particularly in in the litigation area right you do have some real heavy hitters who can say listen it's my way yeah or the highway but generally i would say we are 100 uh, percent service and and so service levels are, are critical um let me take you back to when you started practicing 
uh, because a lot of our viewers are younger lawyers who are just joining the practice. Which is the first mistake you remember making? Um, and how did that shape your career? How, how, how oh. did you... Admission time. Yeah. Okay, so okay. I, it will refer... I, I, it actually, funnily, it has a bearing on one of the early anecdotes I, I shared with you. I missed the filing deadline in litigation. Don't ask me how. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it was. And I mean, I, I'd like to believe I was diligent, but I missed it. I think it was, I had to file an appeal by, uh, the notice of appeal by a particular time frame, right? I think it was 14 days at the time. And I guess, I'd, I think, I think probably at the time, I confused my civil procedure rules with my court of appeal rules. On, I think the Court of Appeal rules had something different at the time. I can't remember. It was. So you were counting it in what in days? No, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. Yeah, but definitely it was mea culpa, no question. Yeah. Um, so I thought, shit. Sorry. I thought, um, how am I going to get out of this now? Um, and that was my biggest mistake. My first, and I mean the one where I thought, um, I can't do this. I, uh, you know, you flap. You, I've destroyed the whole thing, right? Uh, we're going to get sued. We're going to do this. And so when I went to the Court of Appeal to ask for an extension. I had a very senior lawyer against me as well. Um, and I was told it's in chambers. So I asked around, chambers, do I have to gown up? They said, no, 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 you're fine, man, relax, go, yeah? Um, my opposition arrives in fully gowned, wigged, <laughs> and senior, by the way, yeah? senior. At the time, the guy was 60 years old, right? I'm thinking, wah, man, I'm, I'm dead in the water here, yeah? In the end, I was just literally, when I say the, 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 the judge, felt sorry for me there were no there was absolutely no reason for him to give me the extension but in fairness also to my colleague the guy didn't object yeah so that's when i say i have a two or no record one of them is just <laughs> they just, let, just remove this pathetic this pathetic worm from the from chambers but that was my my probably my my first biggest mistake and obviously what it teaches you absolute diligence and 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 um being on top of your deadlines. I'm telling you, when when you now start doing countbacks, even now, even today, you do countbacks on days and you start counting, right? Well, I say I do no litigation. Funny enough, I'm involved peripherally in an arbitration matter with the LCIA. And you start counting the days and when that cold sweat hits you, yeah, you're thinking, okay, let me let me start counting the days again. Have I missed? Yeah. Tuck, 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 tuck. No, I'm okay. But let me do three, two out of three counts. Now you find you're wrong again. You think so? Yeah. So that's to me. Make sure you have a system that very clearly demarcates your deadline. And by the way, this last-minute stuff, just avoid it. Yeah. It's it's it's. There's no reason. I mean, some people work under pressure. I agree. But if you have a filing deadline, don't muck about. Yeah. Don't muck about. Yeah. Having said that. There's always a solution, a lawful solution. Let's put it that way. There's always a lawful solution. So if you miss, if you miss, if you miss a deadline at at at, at, at companies, yeah. right, the 30 day, you can get a you can get an extension, right? It's possible. Just and but okay. Having said that, usually these are extraneous factors. Yeah, don't uh, not because you you drop the ball on 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 counting days in your calendar. Or you're looking at January instead of February, or whatever it was, right? Um, but that was probably the biggest. Um, yeah, the rest, I think, are sort of more benign, I would say. Um, I would say embarrassing mistakes, oversights, if I may call them that. And as much as we think we're infallible, um, make sure your laws are up to date. Um, I know we have a tendency to look at the online stuff, simply because actually there is no other resource now, today. To get a, a hard copy act is probably very difficult. Updating the hard copy act is, 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 is work in itself. So. You know, I've, I've a couple of times I've relied on what's online, um, not necessarily Kenya law, but elsewhere, right? Um, because Kenyan was usually very, very good. I haven't had any issues at all with them. Um, the yeah, so you get caught out with some amendment that came through that hasn't been reflected, even internally, maybe in your update or something. You know, it's it's uh, so that kind of stuff. If you're gonna if you're gonna really, you know, come up with something crazy and, and very conflicting, when when opposing counsel are telling you. It's like this, right? And you're in a completely different direction. You think, yeah, check it. 
double check it, triple check it. What are they looking at? Yeah, um, that's the advice I would give. Um, and there's never a harm, at least maybe I say that now that I'm more senior, there's never a harm in saying, look, where are you getting this from, right? Because I can't find it, so stuff like that. But that's, those are the more benign, benign things. Let's not assume we know it all, but keep reading. And I think if there's one criticism <coughs> I have of even some of our lawyers here is we don't crack books open anymore. You know, it's, uh, we don't, we finish law school, we graduate, we, we might and attend a CLE. Uh, um, today's was interesting as well, by the way, on, on the crypto. Um, the, but you need to keep that education going. You need to keep that reading going. Because I assume we're lawyers by vocation. Not all of us, but largely we're lawyers by vocation. So it's a job that continues to teach, right? And if you're not willing to learn and not willing to keep reading, then this is not for you as far as I'm concerned. I, this is what I love about it. Go back, open it up again, yeah, look at it again. Yesterday we were looking at something, some nonsense article from 2020 that referred to some regulations that uh, we thought, eh? where are you getting this from? It's got nothing to do with the job, yeah. nothing. But we spent time, we spent 10 minutes to determine actually that it's a completely wrong reference in the article, right? And it was some Ugandan thing instead. And they should have, you know, so this kind of stuff, you know, go back and, and look at it again. Look at, I mean, I used to love and I don't get enough of that anymore, unfortunately, because it's just not um, economically viable, is opinion writing. I used to love doing opinion writing, um, you know, that research component, but no one's going to pay you for that time anymore, right? It's, but, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, but do they pay you for it? Yeah, that's my point. You, you. You know, I, I used to love, you know, there's a, there's a problem here, an analysis, one, two, three, four, ergo conclusion that. I look at some of the opinions that I wrote, I still have them, 10, 15 years ago, and I thought, wow, you know, sorry, blowing my own. I mean, I would never be able to replicate that quality today myself because I'm just out of, out of that yeah, practice, yeah. yeah. No, I'm not out of, I can read it, but just that, but I used to enjoy it. I used to, and, you got, and you got paid. Uh, reasonably well for it right so it wasn't it was worth it now to do all that research it, it just doesn't I mean at the cost of transactional work it's it's very uh, it's very difficult but that was um, so just reading I mean I know I've digressed from your question about mistakes but I, I'm, I, I won't say I've not made any we, 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 we all make them right yeah, yeah. we all make them so, so uh, just just building up on the, on the mistakes question I mean you came out well here you are You've, uh, you've built quite a reputation for yourself and the firm. And uh, one of the things that is very synonymous with you um, is being the advocates for the lender in many transactions. So what are some of the most memorable transactions that, you, that you've, you've undertaken? Maybe you can mention three or four. Um, of course, the ones that are in public domain. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to think which ones they are. And this is where you now worry about offending people that are left out, right? <laughs> um, I would say probably the one that really stands out is uh, we did the Lake Turkana financing. Lake Turkana, the wind? The wind, yeah. yeah, as local council actually as it happens uh, for the lender. Um, long ago, one of my first project finance deals was Magadi Soda. Mm -hmm. Now again, now if you've seen today's news, now it's Tata. No, it was in those days. It was Magadi Soda Company. It was Americans who owned it at the time. So you did Tata. Yeah. Yeah. And now you've seen today's news, yeah. The yeah. Amount, yeah. So it's in today's newspaper. Um, so probably those were the two that that really stand out for me. Um, I but Did you do I and M? We used to do a lot of I and M debt, but there's no. When I say stand out, yeah. 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 We're talking about again. No offense. We're talking about stand out. Stand out where you're doing a transaction. I mean, <coughs> yeah. I mean, we've just closed one now, which was the um, one of the road annuity, uh, the lot 32. We closed that one again. You know, you're talking about transactions that take two, three years. Um, I know you laugh because if you look at ticket sizes, but you don't make money on those. So those are all CV deals. They're not because they take too long. They take too long to close. But my desk um, is not is not. Um, Lending. I know the firm is, is, has this reputation for lending and we're almost trying to break away from it because I think it's a mis, 
mischaracterization now. We do as much, if not more, corporate and commercial work. Um, so my desk, depending on the season, you know, the season not being this season, but depending on what's the rigor and what's happening, I can spend 60-70% of my time doing M&A um, and less, less on the lending side, right? It, it all depends. Uh, it depends on what, what lands on your lap and what, what's come through. So, but on the lending side, it's not on the M&A section. I would say the one that really taught me a lot was when we did the merger of um, CFC with Stambic. That was oh. about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. That was war stories on that one. That was really good. So, you know, you had, um, you know, regulator on the banking side, regulator on the insurance side, capital markets, then the, init the, the inevitable sniping that comes with litigation. Yeah, uh, there was one, uh, again, anecdotal, there was a claim against the bank and, and they were trying to block the, the, the closing and we, we got a security, we got a bond out. Um, you know, we put the money, the, 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 the claim amount. Uh, uh, with, the, with the High Court so we could actually release the, 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 the injunction order, right, to, to allow closing. In order for me to beat the clock, I get out of the High Court, where, by the way, I wasn't speaking. I was just there as the, as the, <laughs> as, as, as the Kibarua for the day, yeah? Um, and so I picked up the bond. There was some, some it was a, a guarantee from, from one of the banks to, to, to the High Court. Um, and in order for me to beat the clock, I had to get from A to B in Nairobi in a particular time frame. I get out for traffic, yeah? This is before Bordas were, were there. I found the first picky that was there, right? Because the car was stuck. I got on the back of a picky and just delivered this, this thing on time. So these are the funny stories that we go through sometimes to, uh, to accommodate. Another one, again, I, what we learn, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do, right? Um, this funnily again was another litigation matter where I wasn't, spe I wasn't before the court, but I was helping with the pleadings, right? And I'd broken my uh, my wrist. I used to cycle home in order to beat traffic, and I got hit by a car once. Yeah, so oh. so I broke my wrist, and I was in cast. Um, and we got served with this thing, and we got a file the next day, right? So I'm thinking, okay, now you try typing with a cast up to here. Mm -hmm. I'm in the office. Actually, we're still in Williamson. Yeah, I grabbed the scissors that we were using to cut binding strips. Yeah, cut because I couldn't type. Yeah, cut the cut the cast. Did the pleadings? Yeah, the responses. You went back to the hospital. Went back to hospital. I said, <laughs> "Replace." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what you call now. Like, what are my choices? It's six. Yeah. yeah? And I didn't want to go the next day and be told. We need more time to file, yeah, because you know what's going to happen yeah. in those situations, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then people, you start playing this game. Yeah. I don't forget it. I'm not going to let you get away with this, yeah. I'm staying here, and I actually I think we got a, we 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 were able to proceed with hearing the next day because of that. Even though the other side started their stories, oh, we haven't had time to review, etc. Et mm -hmm. They served us late, so too bad. You carry on now, yeah. And we got we got the orders, but yeah, these are the things. These are the war stories and the funny ones from the from the profession that, uh, that we've had. It's been fun, actually, now that I think about it. Thank you for coming, because you're reminding me of all these, these stories. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so if you're not a lawyer, yeah. Yeah, what do you think you would have Ooh. become? The question is, would I have made a living out of it? Probably no, but sports you has always... Uh, <laughs> who knows? People say money, money is the root of happiness, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, all the evil, it depends. Yeah, we're into, I'm giving you the Greek interpretation. <laughs> of it, yeah. No, it's, um, I would have been in sport, definitely. Don't ask me what sport. So I, was, I used to, my first sport here was, uh, was swimming. It's actually the first time when ethnicity reared its head for me. It was, was being one of, well, actually the best in Kenya in, in two strokes for all Africans and not being selected because I was still Greek. Oh, okay. I didn't have my Kenyan yeah, nationality yeah, yeah, at the time. Yeah. Uh, I got it a year later, yeah? So I wasn't, I wasn't selected. So swimming was, was my, uh, my go-to sport, um, and I made it at national and I would say international level. Um, then when I went to university, I, uh, I did a year of swimming again still, but I just got fed up and it was indoor, not the same as here, I didn't like it. So I ended up rowing, um, you know, these long sleek boats that are on, in rivers and lakes and what have you. And I, uh, well, not kayaks, that's a sculling boat actually. So either in up to, even up to eight men, you can see those, 
the so, ones you're doing your no no you're like this you're actually facing the direction you're you're you're, 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 you're going, going yeah. Yeah, yeah so um no you're facing the opposite you're coming from right uh, that's what they call ring so i uh, and in fact when i told you about the reason i stayed at exeter for my masters was we had a very good crew that was going national mm -hmm. uh at that level right so we stayed on we didn't want to break the crew somehow i convinced my parents that staying at exeter for my masters was purely for academic reasons <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, they, do they know that <laughs> now they now do they know. <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah and then uh, funnily enough the paradox of it was i ended up rowing in greece for uh, for uh, for a season mm -hmm. during holidays and being selected to represent well selectable to represent greece let me put it that way <laughs> by which time i'd given up my greek and take it and kenyan. had my kenyan so i was uh, i missed an opportunity definitely then it was also you know not working well in terms of career and what have you so um it would have been something in sport but whether it's from there to rowing to coming back and f needing you know because sport like i said was always a part of my life and now sitting behind a desk inevitably what happens you think you can eat the same calories that you used to when you were doing uh, the sport you start to they start showing to start but so i thought okay i'm a big fellow rugby i never really grew up with rugby because somehow it was optional at school um you could play it but if it was the same it was the same time as athletics and somehow i i went i'm actually not funny enough having played rugby the paradox is that i was never really into the gratuitous violence that that comes with that <laughs> comes with rugby <coughs> I, never, was I, never, I was well, mostly flanker actually yeah between well back row yeah. but um six, but uh, six yeah. usually yeah um but again it depended you know so and i was i was so i thought okay let me go to rugby and a lot of my old school teachers were playing at Nondis or were coaching at Nondis when it was still in Parklands. T tell them Nondis is the most successful club in Kenya. They need to hear You heard that. it here first. I'm yeah. I'm clearly biased, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so went to Nondis and and uh they uh you know that was the time more or less the same years at Mean Machine uh, there 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 was a disgruntlement amongst some some of the Mean Machine players and they went they also moved across so I moved across at the same time so it was a good time to go. Um and I played 3 4 seasons but then that funny enough, it, it much as i enjoyed it sundays were hell for me post match sundays because i was always broken i was always grazed i was always my wife was like why you, you know you wake up sticking to the bed sheet because you got some <laughs> grass some burns. grass burns or what have you yeah black eye crutches yeah so guys said man you can't come to the office like this anymore <laughs> yeah so after about 4 years i uh, i stopped that um and then since then it's just um uh pastime sport but i take it quite seriously so right now i'm doing uh a lot of triathlon i don't know if you guys have heard of ironman yeah so i'm i'm preparing now for for may in ironman where in yeah. italy actually i'm doing a half a 70.3 in italy uh -huh. so i did three last year i did um port elizabeth or kabecha as they call it now it's changed name i did finland and i did athens So so just so that as you continue that so that people there are people who watch the show they, they do not Man? understand what that is. So Iron Man is uh, is a brand. Let's start with Iron Man as a brand, yeah? But some people associate Iron Man with triathlon. So all Iron Man's are triathlons, but not all triathlons are Iron Man. Triathlon is a combination of three sports: swim, bike, run in that order, okay? The distances vary, but the typical distances are in the case of full Iron Man 3.8 km swim. 180 km bike and full marathon. Okay, so I've done one of those. I did that in 2014. Um then there's a half what they call middle distance, which is what I'm actually training for, although it's under the Ironman brand, which is exactly half those distances. 1.9 swim, 90 bike and uh half marathon run. So back to back, huh? no no rest or what have you. Then you've got the Olympic distance which is shorter and then sprint distance which is even shorter. And the reason we travel overseas for these the longer ones is because there are very few in fact there's only one in Kenya um which is done at the coast and climatically that one to do those distances in the coast climate. I know people do it but I'm not designed and unfortunately much as I am Kenyan unfortunately I don't run like one yeah so is it Kilifi or Diani? Kilifi so no so Kilifi is September which is a really nice one which is a more an extra type where you use mountain bikes so it's off road Diani was in December 
um, which uh, which was good. I did that one. I did the December one. I was I did the sprint distance because I was like off season, and it was fun. You know, you do these faster ones, um, and so I do that. But yeah, it's uh, and so I commit. You know, I uh, in order to keep me sane from this because if I don't, if to to survive this, you've got to have another outlet. Yeah, and for me, sport is my sport is my outlet. And so coming back to your question. Uh, what would I have done? It would have been sports science, um, something along those lines, agency. Coaching is not lucrative enough, unfortunately. And, you know, I wouldn't be a good coach because I still prefer to do than to teach. Than to, than yeah. to teach, yeah. It's, it's, uh, but, I mean, so I commit to it fully. It's 10, 12 hours a week of training. Um, I have a coach. Uh, everything is now through data, garments. They read heart rate, blood pressure, everything. It's all very very scientific which i love right it's it's uh, it's that and then uh you know i try and do a lot of stuff i i uh, when at the coast i i'm in the sea a lot i kayak i kite surf um i windsurf um i get involved in one motorsport event a year which is rhino charge yeah yeah that's you, if you, i i saw you the first okay. time I saw you. you've done it or no 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 no, no. As just a spectator. Spectating. yeah it's 20 yeah. years now that we've been doing it i yeah. hear you have a team yeah, 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 yeah. We've um, so uh, yeah. We started twenty years ago, and just uh, I think this is my opportunity to plug Rhino Charge. People look at it as this entitled elite motorsport event. I want to say it's nothing further. It may appear that way, but the amount of money it collects for preserving Kenya's ecosystem, particularly Nairobi's water catchment areas, with the fencing around the Abadez, Mount Kenya, Burus, etc., is critical. Um, and unfortunately, that message is lost somewhere in the in the petrol and the fumes and the, and the what have you, yeah, the noise that comes with it, the gratuitous noise. But that is the fundamental. So we run a, we've run the same car for 20 years, um, which was actually, funny enough, uh, a gift from my dad. What car is it? A Range Rover Classic, yeah. If you look at it, you, you'll just tell me, throw this thing away, right? Mm-hmm. Slightly modified. Um, not these crazy machines that people are spending silly money on today. I, I don't, I mean, that's what uh, horses for courses if that's what they like good for them I just don't see for once a year no point we'd rather give the money to the to the charity if we're going to spend that but yeah we've run pretty much the same core crew uh, old friends um, for 20 years and now funnily enough the next generation which is uh, uh, in my case in my car it's my nephews because I've got girls and as it happens our wives are also in their own car so Bush Babes oh Bush Babes is Bush your Babes wife Bush Babes is my wife my brother-in-law's wife, yeah, it's and friends. So, oh. so what's happening now? My daughters uh, uh, are gravitating oh, so to bush babes, yeah. and my because I've got no boys, uh, my nephews are, 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 are coming to us. Yeah, so we've now typically we're typically running a crew of four adults and two youngsters. Yeah, to try and uh, bring them in. And it's great having them because they listen. Yeah. yeah? The thing with uh, with us is to, so no <laughs> offense to anyone, but uh, yeah. but, but having, having the, the kids, kids there, they listen. listen. You, you know, you tell them go and rule that rock. They yeah. do it. They yeah. won't argue. They, they won't say go around. No, oh, there's another way here. Oh, I'm tired. Or what have you? They do it. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's, that's that's good fun. fun. We've, uh, we've done twenty years now, um, and it's something we support. We like support, and it's a nice way for you know the thing about in Nairobi and work, etc. Once, Once you come, come life happens, happens, you know, so your ability to tell the calm truth, you have to make a big effort to do it, right? And what Rhino Charge does for us, we see places that honest to God and would not see mm. if it wasn't in control. And to see them, it, I think the, the people, the people are amazing. You know, you go out to these conservancies and the group ranches and what have you, that whole street. And there's some really, really, t- I don't even say Nairobi's king in the all. Kenya is everything except for right? something. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. And uh, of course, the, the environment, the location, the, the, the scenery is we, I'm telling you, I can't even do it. It's something we look forward to every year. It's, it's great. And yeah, preparing the car. We've already started. And we love that on in the dinner mobs. What broke last year, how we're going to fix it. It's always we will learn a bit in the character of your actual new process. Yeah, and you run a range of them, notorious. So, in, when you're doing all these things, you're doing, you've done, uh, you're doing uh, Ironman, you're doing the practice of law, um, you're doing cycling, you're doing all these things. Where do you get all the time to do that? And you have a family, you know. Okay. 
fair question. I think it's uh, so. I think I guess two qualifiers to that. One, my girls are older now, so the demands on on my girls or from my girls are significantly less. Two, and probably most important, I have a hugely understanding wife, who I suppose I should have named first in that in that equation. <laughs> if it wasn't for the indulgences that that I'm given on that. Um, she recognizes the importance of these things for my well-being and my, 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 to use a word that I dislike, mental health these days. Um, she just lets me get on with my stuff and we spend whatever. So, so when you say, where do you get the time? It's, we all have the time, and most of us have the time, right? There's 150 hours in a week or whatever it is, right? Um, but the demands from the family, at least, are not as the, the same as someone who's got two-year-olds and three-year-olds and and what have you or perhaps the dynamic at home is is slightly different so I'm given the platform that's one two you make the time if you love something you make the time how do you chill yeah we all we can't no one can tell us we're working 24 hours for seven days a week or whatever it is right where's your breaking point what is it that you're gonna give up in order to and so fundamentally if you do some if you if there's something you love You'll find time for it. It's 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 the truth of it, and I won't lie. I mean, there are challenges. When I know, for example, I'm training for an event now, I know I've got to do X hours a week, and you know I've got a particular program for tomorrow, and I'm, I know I've got a heavy day, a heavy afternoon tomorrow because I've got some commitments, etc. And I've got to fulfil the training in the morning. I'm thinking, what well, what time do I have to get up to do this? You know, so already dreading it. Yeah, it's but. I know it'll have a knock-on effect if I don't do it, right? And then my coach in the U.S. will start giving me a hard time. So, so you just, you just, you just make the time. And like I said, it's the, the, I, I, it would be selfish of me to say that it is my ability alone that achieves that. If I wouldn't do it, if I didn't have the ecosystem yeah, around me, that that actually allows me to do it. And many people do not have that same ecosystem. Um, it's not a financial ecosystem, although that also helps. It is a social ecosystem. Um, okay, that's a good place to pick uh, my next question from. Um, as a pilot of this Dege called uh, Walker Contos, do you preach the same gospel to the people who work under you to find time to do things outside the law? I would like to think so. I mean, first, I mean, I guess that question should be posed to them. I think um, I would like to say that the demands we make on, our, on, on the time of our staff are reasonable. Um, that's my perception of it. Um, and if I were to call you at 5 p.m. and you don't pick up, but you call me at 6 because you were in the gym, I'll say, no problem, well done, keep it going, yeah? But if you tell me I was in the bar, <laughs> <laughs> then I would have issues, yeah? But if my, the bar is how I balance my life. Yeah, there's ba okay, there's balance and balance, yeah? I knew that was coming, yeah? was shooting pool at the bar. No, but you know, you know what I mean. So for me, you, for me, it's, it's I believe, I believe that uh, that that uh, we do uh, offer an environment in which um, which is conducive to people having uh, a, an appropriate balance. We recognise the need for it. Um, we're probably a bit stricter on the on the work from home concept um, than maybe some of the others. You know, I don't know some. I hear others are operating a three days on, two days off kind of thing. I don't know. If, less so probably in Kenya. Um, but definitely in the, in the UK, US, you do get that. That just doesn't work for us. If that's part of the equation of work-life balance, no, we don't have that, okay? Um, but in terms of you've got to go to your kid's school, you've got to take your child, your mom to hospital, you've got to, um, like you say, you know, do a bit of exercise, a bit of sport, um, that, you know, we, we will encourage it as long as you deliver. And, and I don't think we set unreasonable expectations in terms of, uh, what is expected in terms of in terms of deliverable, right? I mean, and and I think the reason our staff are here is because we, and we have that longevity, is that. And in same vein, if you say, look, guys, we've got to do this by Monday. I need everyone in on Sunday, and you know we accommodate for people who are going to church in the morning, etc. We balance that out. We recognise that it is still your personal time, but we do need to deliver. If that means we're working from two till ten, 
we'll do it. Yeah, it doesn't happen often, right? But so you know the nature of the yeah. the nature of the beast, right? Um, and we're very we're very lucky like that. So I, I think we're we're reasonable, we're fair, and uh, but like I said, possibly it's a broader question to be posed to them to uh, to my colleagues rather than to uh, than to uh, than to me. I, I just because what I believe may not be the the truth. Who knows what people are saying behind my back, right? It's, yeah. uh, Still staying on the on the on, on, on the on the on the plane that he's talking about, Walker Contos. We had um the Ndege. He's saying the Ndege that is Walker. So here we are. I saw an article today by Bitang and Demo, um, just telling lawyers, look, here we are. Look, this is so so. Cool. See, we even have wildlife. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, we have uh, vervet monkeys that come. I don't know where they come from. Oh. There's three. There's a family of three that live here. Yeah. Hey, oh, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. You don't see a lot of this in Nairobi. No, before. not here. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw an article today, and of course, this is the where the conversation is moving towards, where guys are talking about how we need to rethink about the practice of law, and uh, having a lot of technology, and also getting into the niche areas of uh, tech. ESG and such sort of thing. And I hear you're very tech savvy. Roma has it that you're very tech savvy. So how are you positioning yourself and also how you position the farm to get into such spaces? I don't think I'm as tech savvy as you might believe. Um, I mean, I've been told that. Um, <laughs> I, put, I don't consider myself yeah. as tech savvy. Yeah. But I think, is this the same article where you said um, that um, it will free up a lot of time for people to do work. Yeah, there was an element, I think, with that article, with, with all respect to Ambassador and Ambassador Demo. The, I, there's one area that does worry me about this whole AI in legal services yeah. and the whole chat GBT sort of parallel, um, which is, I worry a little bit with our upcomers, right? I believe what artificial intelligence in legal services will do, it will cut away some of the more standard yeah. research-oriented um, opinion writing in some cases, where we still need, right now, bodies on the ground, okay? And unfortunately, and this is something I preach to my junior staff, my junior lawyers, think carefully, much as I might be chasing you away, think carefully about whether you want to be in practice whether you want to work for a law firm because what I think artificial intelligence is doing is keeping dinosaurs like me in jobs yeah it's not getting rid of me it's getting rid of the juniors that's my take on it because AI will will always be imperfect whichever way we whichever way we do it right it will never be a hundred percent so you still need I think a human not a bot. And that reviewer is the guy with the, the lady or the guy with gray hair, no hair. Whatever. The dinosaur. The dinosaur, unfortunately. And I think that's what worries me about, about that. Now, in terms of keeping, do I have any AI tools in the office to define AI? Do we have Harvey? No. But, you know, do we use any other online resources? Yes. I don't consider that AI, right? AI is, it's, you know, we have, we have re research tools that have definitely sped up or applications that have sped up our work, but nothing has been replaced by a computer telling us what the, uh, it, it, you know, the chat GBT type thing, right? Um, I think also, A, because I'm nervous about it, um, because I just haven't tried it. Two, whatever products are out there are not Kenya-focused. They're not even Africa-focused. They're usually very American in... Uh, in outlook okay and three they cost an arm and a leg right so no i'm not going to do it but it's it's there i don't think it's going to go away but it will affect and i think potentially adversely some of the entry level entry level work um that 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 uh, that is being done today um, maybe not immediately but i think that's what i'm 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 nervous about it, I, um, and I think it's here to say it's not going to go away. Yeah, it's not going to go away because there are, you know, the guys who are developing this software will see that there's a market for it, right? You um, probably try to, look to domesticate it. Yeah, it's there. It's going to happen. So that's that's where we are. Um, and you know, AI, the, the, yeah, it can it can it can work both ways, but it's not it's not going away. 
uh, and whether it's gonna, uh, what it's going to do is it forces the younger generation to look at al alternatives to practice. Now, will that then have an impact on loss of talent, etc.? There'll be an equilibrium, right? I don't think AI will replace talent. Yeah, um, that no, that's that's not going to happen. But we'll definitely see less lawyers coming into private pr practice and more of them going into what I consider to be, you know, either in-house or, you, you know, you can do law and then do something else, right? It's, yeah, yeah. Look, passion. Follow your passion. You know, it's not. I think for anyone who wants to do law as a degree, you know, I, I am arrogant enough to say, if you're not in sciences, there is no better degree to do. Um, I really firmly, because it teaches analysis, it teaches uh, the proper thinking as far as I'm concerned, more than any other degree that's not in the sciences, right? But you've got to enjoy it, okay? Um, it's always a fallback, um, uh, but it doesn't mean you have to work in law. You know, there's a trend here, if you're going to do, you, do, do law, you're reading law, right? Um, my da daughter threw a bombshell the other day, because I've, I've probably, because of this whole AI thing, I've also not been that encouraging about uh, law as, as, as a degree and she threw it at me the other day and she says yeah I want to do a conversion so I'm beginning to be a bit more you know now she's, she wasn't doing it because her dad's a lawyer you know she's, she's reading something completely different um, I can see she's done two years of university she's seen her lawyer friends etc so she says yeah I want to do it as part of a conversion now whether that thought process was, and I'm less antagonistic to it because I've also got it in my head that she doesn't need to practice necessarily it's a great degree. It's a great degree to have. Cool. Um, I think we've come to the end. Yeah, so the normal activities. So we have three activities, very short one. One, you look at the camera. Okay. Can you say quick on Wakili in Greek? Wakili is uh, lawyers. Lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> well, lawyers. Yeah. 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 Vikigori. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? Vikigori. Vikigori. It sounds like she <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ah. It does actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Kigori. The Kigori. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Second one. Which is, by the way, uh, the Kyo mm -hmm. is truth. Truth. Mm. So the Kigori mm -hmm. is, uh, is literally translated as finders of the truth yeah. or purveyors of the truth. Ah. So we normally sign this shirt. Okay. Uh, I think you can see some of uh, the signatures we've had here. Some are visible, others are less visible. Others here. You clean the shirt and it's dirty. It's never dirty, it's never, it's never worn. So I'm so supposed to sign? Yeah, just sign it. Let me just make sure that it, it works. Anywhere? Anywhere. The only signature that you will oh. recognize. Thank you. Yeah. And then Thank we'll you. have, we'll take photos with uh, Thank Kevin. Thank you very much. Yes. I honestly thought I'd be done in 45 minutes. I told you you're going to have stories, yeah. Kevin, photos. Thank you, well done guys.